Hey guys, Canadian Zangief back again, and uh, this time I'm going to be reviewing uh, uh, an awesome little piece of tech that uh, you know f definitely filled a void in my collection, um, and that's uh, the Pocket Chip portable uh, Linux computer. Um, now, normally I don't review like computer stuff on the channel, but uh, this lets me be able to actually play a little bit of the retro. Um, computer era you know the Commodore 64 and stuff like that and uh, even like DOS box old Windows games so uh, yeah let's take a look hey so here we have the actual device the pocket chip a portable uh, Linux computer um, has its own built-in keyboard and everything like that uh, the keys are kind of interesting. They're like little flat metal discs, but they're very clicky. Um, it, it feels like very solid. Uh, this is actually a touch screen. Um, and it's housed all in like a, a see-through box, so you can kind of see everything that goes into it. It's very simple. Um, this is the processor. It comes right in and out. Everything comes apart on this. Nothing is screwed down. Everything is clipped in. So they're really encouraging you to uh, do some mods on it. Like back here, this is like a DS stylus that I uh, end up using all the time. This yellow thing here is actually a drywall uh, counter screw. Um, so I drilled a hole through it and put it through and cut it down and, and now it just fits the uh, stylus, you know? Works out really nice. Uh, it doesn't come with a speaker but I'm planning on adding one inside here once I take it apart again. Um, doesn't seem too difficult. Uh, maybe I'll do a video on it when I get the parts. But uh, what it has on board, since this is a computer, I normally don't do computer reviews and stuff like that, but this is retro based and uh, I have a lot of fun with this thing. Uh, I know uh, Thrift Dweller Nate is a huge uh, Commodore 64 fan, so this is something that would definitely interest him. Anyways, um, one gigahertz uh, ARM V7 processor. Um, it has uh, 512 megabytes of RAM, uh, Wi-Fi support, uh, Bluetooth, a five-hour battery, uh, and four gigs of uh, hard drive. Well, I guess it's flashed, but anyways, four gigs of space, which is huge. You don't need that much space, and I'm never gonna go through it, so I'm never gonna have to increase it, because if you're doing retro computing on this, you gotta remember the software, you're lucky if any of them are, you know, more than like a couple of megabytes. So, I think the operating system takes up about uh, 300 megabytes, so there's a lot of space left. I could probably fit the entire Commodore 64 library out here and have, you know, room to burn. Um, so, let's uh, just boot it up here. Just press and hold. It'll blink up. So this is the basic menu. I've already updated everything. Um, it comes with a couple things on board. Um, it has this Pico 8, which has a lot of uh, like little predetermined built-in games for it. Um, they're they're kind of neat, you know. They it's all open sourced, so as you're playing the game, you can actually go into it and reprogram the games as you go along. Um, I'm not going to go into it because that's not really what I want to focus on right here, but. Uh, uh, how you get stuff loaded on this is you go into like terminal and uh, I'm not familiar with Linux like at all but you have to kind of luckily there's a, a vibrant community out for it which can teach you how to do stuff so you could set up all the Wi-Fi and everything like that uh, fairly straightforward through the uh, the previous menu before and uh, you search online through the chip community and you can find out how to download and install games so, so far, um, I've got Commodore 64 going, and I've got Doom. The original Doom, and it plays great. So I have it set up, so I just have to type in Doom, and then enter. And then it loads up. And we got some classic Doom. Get this stylus out of the way here. It's a little irritating. 
uh, plays just like how I remember it. Um, super cool. The possibilities for this are like pretty ridiculous. Like, I know you can get uh, like Warcraft going on this, you can get Starcraft going on this. You know, anything you can run on like uh, older Windows stuff, you can pretty much get going on this. You know, I'm pretty new to the whole Linux system, so this is pretty slow going for me. I'm just kind of uh, at the mercy of, uh, you know, the community and waiting for response of questions and stuff like that. But it seems to be very positive, um, the, any experience I've had with dealing with the community for this. And for such a low price, it's just like a little tink tinker around piece of tech. And I've had a lot of fun trying to figure things out with this. Um, so for the Commodore 64, I'll just type in X64. That's the command line after you've installed it. And it should boot right up. And there we go with the classic Commodore 64 screen. So uh, I'm just going to load up one game just to show you. Fortunately, it's like I said, it's not going to have any sound. Alt 8. Now, the menu for it when you load it up, it's a little bit off. So you have to kind of just know where everything is a little bit. Like on the side, it doesn't size properly. This is Vice, which is a Commodore 64 um, emulator. Um, but once you have it set up, you know, it's not too difficult. Like I've made a folder for uh, Commodore 64 ROMs at the top there. And uh, then I have all the games here. Um, I've got a lot of the homebrew ones, which are really cool. I've got like uh, Darkness and uh, Night and Grail, uh, Soulless, uh, Ghosts and Goblins, that's a regular one, but it's really fun. Last Ninja, Maniac Mansion, uh, I know that's one of Nate's favorites. Um, and Millennium Assault, which is another cool one. Um, just uh, so I play something everyone's kind of familiar with, I'll do Ghouls and Ghosts. So this kind of confused me a little bit here when I had this loaded up. This side here, whoops, <laughs> I guess I uh, accidentally started. You have to actually click the, the program side on there, even though it looks like a description to me but it actually is an interactive uh, something you actually click on. Um, just like with all Commodore 64, you know, the loading's a little bit odd, so we'll just fast forward till this gets running. That kind of garbage. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to getting a speaker for this. Like, it has a, like a jack for a headset. Oops, it's on the back. Um, so I could listen to it with my headset, and I do. But uh, I don't like wearing a headset all the time. When I get that speaker installed, it's going to be amazing. And this will take a little bit to load. Let's see, press, press space. Ghosts and Goblins. And there we go. Oops. You know, Commodore 64 is like basically Nintendo graphics. You know, some are a little bit lower, some are a little bit higher, but it plays great. Uh, I wish I could get a joystick working for this, and apparently it does have. Yeah, I died. <laughs> it's very difficult to play this while I'm holding it in front of the computer. Um, I mean, in front of the camera. But, anyways, um, I'll just exit out of here by pressing the power button goes back to the terminal um, so anyways I'm not the biggest fan of how this is with the uh, um, these kind of keyboards so I, I've actually gone to uh, let's just shut it down before I do this um, gone to uh, Thingverse which is a place where you can do uh, digital um, 3D printout request kind of thing and then I went on Etsy and found a guy to print it out for me. I actually got a keyboard made up that fits over top of this. Uh, makes things a little bit more comfortable. Now of course um, I couldn't fit everything on the keys right here because there's like three different things. There's the FN set and then there's the, the shift set and 
you know, it's a little bit tricky. So I keep a picture of it on my phone just in case I need to go and uh, do a little bit of extra things for installing, um, like for uh, characters. Uh, let's see if I can get this off. Okay, there's just little clips. thing can come off so this thing holds that screen in place and right here I have something that fits over top it takes a little bit of tinkering to get it to fit right you know it's definitely uh, it's the systems as good as you make it absolutely if uh, you're not willing to experiment around with it you're not going to get too far with it so this is what I came up with here. Um, crappy paint job, whatever, but it's uh, it feels good. And it's got a little D-pad kind of thing for the arrow keys for gaming. And yeah, I, I couldn't be happier with uh, the pocket chip. And every time I fiddle around with it, I learn something new, uh, figure out a new game, and uh, yeah. For, for the price, you can't really go wrong. So, yeah. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Cheers.